So hello and welcome back to the Final Whistle podcast. Joining myself and Bobby today is Lewis, who runs a Premier League Instagram page. Um, go check him out. Uh, we'll put all the link and stuff in the description of the video. Uh, but today's episode is a Premier League mid-season review. So if we start off at the bottom of the table, uh, Sheffield United sat bottom with two points, no wins from the opening 16 games. Bobby, do you think there's any chance of them staying up this season? Uh, I think it's quite obvious. I'm going to have to go with a no. Honestly, I think, I don't know, maybe it was second season syndrome. They're just sort of not prepared for the second season of the Premier League or maybe they're just players of they've, the team is just not gelled as well this year. Maybe, I don't know. It's hard to say because they actually did really well last year, but not sure what the reason is, but I can't see them staying up. No, definitely not. And Lewis, do you think maybe it's the fact that um, people have worked out how they play this season? So... Um, you know, they set up better defensively to kind of deal with them. Uh, yeah, well, it definitely could be. Because last season, there still wasn't as many goals as they need. But, but they were defending a lot better. So now I think a few, def- I think, uh, a few players have got injuries, which their squad depth isn't as good as other teams. So I think that's why they're not doing as well. Mm. And definitely, and then another team just sat above them is uh, West Brom, who are on eight points. So that's five from safety because currently Brighton is seventeenth. Um, uh, obviously, Allardyce has just taken over, Bobby. Do you think that he can um, turn it around for them? No, because he is sort of the key manager that is able to do that. But um, Obviously, they started off well getting a point at Anfield. That was, you know, that was a, a good result for West Brom. But then, obviously, last night, they lost 5 0 to Leeds, which I don't know, that sort of undoes the work, undone the work that they've done at Liverpool. So, yeah, I definitely think he could be the guy to keep them up given his track record. But, you know, it's a bit hit and miss. And it depends if they've got enough in them to stay in the Premier League. Mm, definitely. And obviously, Allardyce has got the record of never being relegated from the Premier League. Um, Lewis, do you think that maybe this will be the year that that record is broken? Well, it definitely could be, but I think it won't happen if they have new signings in January because mm. there isn't enough quality in their squad to stay up. I don't think if they had the best manager in the world and can stay up with this team, I think it's all just what happens in January. Yeah, they have got... Um... Definitely, I think, more suited to a championship squad. Um, so maybe that's yeah, this is their, a transfer window for Allardyce to sort the sort it all out. They were linked with, I think, uh, Palace centre-back Tomkins to maybe come in. And, you yeah. know, Allardyce was at Palace, so he obviously knows him well enough and thinks that he could do a good job. Um, and we look at uh, your team, Bobby Arsenal, who've won the last two games. They're now uh, 13th and... I think nice, nice. Nine, nine points off the drop zone. So a bit of improvement there. Do you think that this is now going to be the turnaround for your season? I certainly hope so. But, you know, it's always a bit hit and miss. I think the game against Chelsea was brilliant. But the only difference between that and... I, we, I don't know if you watch the Arsenal games, but against Chelsea, we were a lot more convincing. And I think that yeah, was because of the energy in our team. Chelsea, mm. they were obviously going to come at us. And defensively, they weren't as solid as Brighton were. So it allowed for the younger players, you know, exploit the gaps, exploit the mistakes. And against Brighton, when they sat back, you saw in the first half, it definitely did affect us. And we weren't creating as many chances. But then we came out in the second half. We came out with a bit more energy. We made some more chances. And then obviously Lacazette comes on Saka with that brilliant run and sets up the goal. And I think, you know, these first two games shows a little bit of um, hope, you know, to end, end off the year well. And hopefully... Because, as you say, everyone was saying we were relegation candidates and you've got the likes of Chelsea, who are title contenders, and we're only six points off them now. So I think this year the league is so open that it's def- definitely unwise to write someone off so soon. So I think if we could get you know, a few good performances, we've got West Brom next and then we've got Newcastle, I think, in the FA Cup. So I think with the maybe performances that are slightly you know, more catered to us than others could help us climb up the table, hopefully, in the second half of the season. Yeah, they're obviously, as you said, they're only six points off Chelsea and you're only nine points off uh, Everton in fourth, but they got a game in hand, so you can kind of put that a bit off. But definitely, as you said there, the league is very open this season. Um, 
And you mentioned Chelsea, who spent a lot of money over the summer after their transfer embargo. Obviously, got Havertz and Werner yes. coming in and Ziyech. Do you think, um, Lewis, would you expect them to have been doing better than they are at the moment? Obviously, currently sat six. Well, I think uh, a lot of people overestimated them because, especially Premier League, and most of their players came from, uh, or Havertz and, and Werner, both came from uh, Germany, which is a very different league. Because in Germany, it's a lot softer than uh, the Premier League. Yeah. And I think that's their problem with them. Too many signings in a single season won't work you need, because you need the uh, time for them to um, get used to the league. So maybe in two or three seasons, then they'll start getting back to their best. Mm. Well, Lampard's been there. Obviously, he came straight from Derby after his after just one season at the job there. Bobby, do you think that Lampard's the right man for Chelsea? Obviously, he's got the connection with the club um, and he's done some impressive results, got some of the lower down players, you know, much better than people would have expected. Like Kurt Zuma's come back and he's been brilliant. Do you think that Lampard is the right man to keep him forward? Obviously, two calls going to be available now. I think it's it's difficult to tell. I think at the moment they're in sort of a transition period, the same to United and Arsenal. I do think it's... I don't... Not totally convinced on it right now. He spent a lot of money on arguably players that it couldn't be his fault in the way he spends it because they are some of the best performing players in Europe last season. I think Chilwell was definitely a good signing. Thiago Silva was a good signing. Ziyech is definitely a good player, but you know he's been quite injured, so it's hard to tell. And obviously Havertz and Verne, you'd expect them to pick up the pace eventually. But I think with Lampard, it's difficult to tell because you know they, they got top four last season and you know they got to an FA Cup final, which they unfortunately bottled to <laughs> Arsenal. But... Um, it's hard to tell. I'm not. I saw this thing saying that he hadn't beat a team in the top ten yet this year, which you know is a bit worrying. Mm. But I think he could be the man. But it all depends on you know if they pick up their form and their big money signings start performing how they want to. Really. Yeah, and I think one of the surprise stories that we've had in the Premier League this season is Man United, which I mean it's a weird saying because for years you would have nowhere put them, put them nowhere near the top. They're Two points of Liverpool. Both teams are, have got a game to play. Um, yeah. but it's really close. And I think, obviously, I'm not a United fan, so we might have to speak to Arian, who we had on at some point uh, recently on about how he's feeling, because I'm sure he's delighted. Um, yeah. United are doing so well. Lewis, what do you make of their recent results? Well, uh, I'm going to be quite biased here, because I'm also a United fan. <laughs> but yeah. I think uh, the past few results have been good. Their um, game against Leicester, they should have won, but just a few mistakes at the back. And um, I think they always have a decent team. I, they have good fixtures coming up until, well, I think it's three weeks until they play Liverpool, which I think will decide if they have enough to win the title. But it will definitely be quite close. Yeah. Obviously, when I mean, it still doesn't really feel to me. Obviously, they won last night, I think 1 0 against Wolves. Um, and they're getting all these good results and they're sat second. But when United are playing, I don't think, oh, well, this, this is the title challenging team. Bobby, do you? Yeah. How, how surprised have you been with, you know, their, their play this season? I don't know. It's quite surprising, really, because it only feels like a few few weeks ago that they were sitting in 16th along with Arsenal and now they've you know the league has been so unpredictable it's probably one of the best seasons we've had in a long time oh, yeah. and it's crazy to think that they were they're now they're only two points off Liverpool who you think have been running away with it recently but yeah I think you know Bruno Fernandes I think the uh, the disrespect needs to stop a little bit because I think he's a class player you know he's definitely changed how United play obviously I would hate for them to win the league but I'd rather, I think I'd rather them win it than Liverpool. I'm not totally sure. Mm. But yeah. I, it all depends on whether their defence can hold out for that long. I mean, Bayer had a great game last night. And Maguire, you know, he's still always got that unpredictable side to him. But he could be, you know, a key part of them winning the league. So I think as long as they keep Bruno fit and their main players fit, I think they definitely do have a chance of challenging Liverpool if they keep their form up. Mm, definitely. I think uh, from what we saw the other night with Liverpool... Uh, 
it was Liverpool West Brom and Liverpool were very bad especially in the second half first half they controlled it obviously because Allardyce had like eight at the back um, yeah and everyone was in their half apart from De Gea uh, not apart from Allison sorry um so the second half was very disappointing the goal to be fair for West Brom was very good it was a very good header um but you obviously not as good as Liverpool's standards and there was rumor that Salah could be leaving because he's been talking to some press about maybe about talking how good Barcelona and Real Madrid are um yeah Bobby would you see him leaving you know obviously he's if he wins everything, he can win over here. Yeah, I mean, it's always weird when, you know, it always seems like no matter how good or bad Barcelona or Real Madrid are doing, the, the players that are playing well in the Premier League always want to go there. It happened with Hazard, and, you know, he's been a massive flop at Real Madrid. And I do say to myself, why would Salah want to go to Barcelona, who are in a bit of a crisis right now? They've got an ageing team. Lionel Messi's are going to leave. And you've got Real Madrid, to be fair, they're playing right, but do they really need him? And I think if he stays at Liverpool, he'll become a club legend and he can keep racking up his goals, Sally, aim to win another league title. And I think it would just be stupid to move to another club, to be honest. But honestly, it all depends on him. And I think without him there, you would definitely see a big dip in Liverpool's form. So I do think he's one of the most important players. Mm. Well, what you just said there was basically what Klopp said when they asked him of why would he want to go? And maybe yeah. if if Messi was to leave, then maybe Barcelona would want him to shove out on the right where Messi normally plays. Um, yeah. But we'll have to see what happens there. Another surprise team who are doing quite well, Aston Villa are in fifth. They've, mm-hmm. got, they've got two games in hand, and I think if they get six points, um, at the moment they could practically go third or def- they definitely go third they could be challenging second um lewis do you think that um it soon aston villa will come crashing back down to their usual selves uh well i think it i think they will go down i don't think they'll go as far as last season i think i think they were 17th last season but um i think they could move down to like ninth eight I definitely don't see them getting Champions League football next season, but it, anything can happen. Yeah, definitely. Um, and a team that have been performing way un, like below expectations are Man City, of course. Um, but then again, they have also got these two games in hand. And that, if you look at uh, fifth all the way down to ninth, they're all on 26 points. So it really is, you know, open this year can anyone can really get top four and I think that would really just wrap off the 2020 part of the season um, yeah Bobby what do you think will happen yeah, to I think uh, oh, sorry go ahead yeah sorry sorry to interrupt but um, if you actually look at the table there's um, 24 points there's only 24 points between first and uh, West Brom in 19 so mm. really uh, it's a very close league because I think there's definitely been a lot more draws than last season. Yeah, West definitely. Brom for the title, anyone? <laughs> we we were saying it, Bobby, at the start of the season. We were talking about yeah. West Brom for the title, so you never really know. Um, they could always bring it back. <laughs> if City don't get, you know, first or second, which isn't looking likely at the moment, but we'll see again. Um, what do you reckon about Pep? Do you think he obviously he's got a new contract, so he's quite likely to stay? Do you think getting Messi would be a key factor of him staying at Man City? I think that's probably the only reason he's still there right now. I think the owners are definitely waiting out for the summer or or maybe even January. You know, hoping that because of Pep's connection, he could bring Messi in. I think you know the expectations of City and their players are so high at the moment that I think that's why we're seeing this sort of. It looks much worse than it actually is, I think, because they are seeing an eighth, but two games in hand, if they win both of those games, if even, if they even win one, they're back in you know, contention to top four. And if they win two, then they're, they're second place. So I think they do need to be given a little bit of leeway, especially based on the, the two games in hand. But I do think that's probably one of the reasons why Pep Guardiola is still here, because of the chance of them getting messy. And I think the money that would make them and the signing that would be probably be the biggest signing in history. So, yeah, it would be uh, interesting to see if that one goes through. And obviously, if you look at the championship, Stoke are near the playoffs. 
and this could happen. Stoke go up. Can Messi do it <laughs> on a rainy night at Stoke on a Tuesday? It would be good to see. Um, it would be good to as, see. As long as it don't happen of what last night. And we're honestly watching the Forest game versus Stoke. And there was so much mist, you couldn't see the other side of the pitch. Yeah, I saw that. Um, and even the Forest manager, Chris Hutton, said he couldn't see the other side of the pitch. So that would be interesting to see Messi play in those conditions. Um, but then you look, seventh, uh, Tottenham, they have got a game in hand. So as we've said, we can go into the top four. But obviously, they've dropped off quite a bit um, from being you know, at the top, challenging Liverpool. Um, but yeah. another team that have come on considerably since the manager arrived at Everton and Ancelotti. Um, mm-hmm. They've also got a game in hand. And if they win that, then they can also go up to about second. So, Lewis, do you think that um, obviously having Ancelotti as manager is key to them improving and possibly getting Europe? Uh, I think they won't get... Um... Champions League because I think Rodriguez has been injured the past few weeks, which has made him drop points quite a few times. But I think they definitely have one of the best managers ever, and that will also want that will give a lot of players the want to go. Like Rodriguez, I think only sorry to keep on going back to him, but the reason why he joined was because of the man was because of the manager and his um, recent playing under that manager. Mm. But I think they could get top four, but they definitely will, will be in the top half. Yeah, and obviously, as you said, they're coming to join the manager. Obviously, they had Alan come in to the midfield because of him. And I was watching the other night, it was the cup game between United and Everton. And you wouldn't have said that the Everton side was fourth because... They played some horrific football. Obviously, yeah, rotated squad. Uh, but like Andre Gomez, I don't think I've seen a worse performance this season than him. He was awful. But they can do it when, obviously, if they get um, Rodriguez back. Against who was that? That was against United. Um, oh, really? And they weren't brilliant either, to be honest. But No, yeah. You know, um, so obviously once Rodriguez is back, he's very key for them. So maybe once he's back... Um, as Lewis said, they will push a bit further on. Um, if we look at top scorers this this uh, season, Salah is currently at the top, and then you have got Vardy and Son and Calvert Lewin, yeah. Bruno Fernandez. Those are the top five, and Bamford's just below Fernandez. Um, we said at the start Calvert Lewin possibly for the Golden Boot. Um, Bobby, do you see that happening, or do you think it will be Salah? He's two goals ahead, I think. I. I don't know. It's hard to tell. It depends where the Everton pick their good form up again. I think Calvert-Lewin does rely on supply. You know, I don't think he is quite as good as creating goals as Salah possibly yeah, is for he, himself. He, has, but he hasn't got any assists this season. No. So I think with the way that the team's going to play, I don't think Liverpool are going to see a drastic drop in form. And I think Everton, it all does depend on form for them. So I think it, we could either see it being... Salah or Vardy or possibly Bruno Fernandes, depending on how the form of the teams go. Mm. So if we go for a player of the season so far, uh, Bobby, who would you put forward? Um, It doesn't really match recently, but I'm going to have to go for... Hmm, I don't know, it's a difficult one. I'll go Harry Kane. Lewis, what about you? Uh, I'll go um, Son... Or Nandez, because Son had a good um, start the season. Uh, he, if the Spurs are playing quite negative football at the moment, so I think it's quite hard. But Bruno Fernandez is um, fifth in goal scorers and second in assists, which is giving a big impact to his team's performance. Yeah, I would go again, probably Son definitely doing very well. But then if Salah keeps it up, then maybe he can get it. But... um. That was a quick recap of this season so far. We're halfway through. Maybe United will win a title. Maybe West Brom will win the title. We'll have to wait and see. Um, thank you, yeah, everyone, for listening. Make sure to go and follow uh, Lewis's Instagram page. I'll make sure to go and put it in the description. Um, but thank you for listening, everybody. That was the final whistle.